In this video, I'm gonna share with you seven LED video lights that you can throw in your camera bag, take with you on photo shoots, or use to light your videos. All these products had to meet two criteria. One, they had to have the ability to be battery powered, and two, they had to have some way to be attached to a light stand. The first light is actually this Amazon clip-on light that was made famous on TikTok. It costs like 30, 35 dollars, but it also has three lighting modes. So you can set it so that it's 2,700 Kelvin, probably like 4,000 Kelvin, and what I'm guessing is 5,600 Kelvin. Now, why that's important is because each one of these lights needs to have a 5,600 Kelvin lighting setting to match the light that I'm using here as my control. And if you don't know what that is, that's the white balance setting. So when you're shooting on your camera or on your cell phone, you might see that little slider or that K number. 5,600 Kelvin is where you wanna set your videos to get the cleanest, most color accurate footage. So this new MOA light isn't too bad, but it was the dimmest light on our list. Now with all the lights, I did a Lux reading. I'm about two feet away from the light source and the number that I'm looking for is around 900 Lux. That's what I'm shooting on now and ideally that's what I'd like to get each of these lights to. But unfortunately due to its size and its battery power, this guy can only hit around five or 600 Lux. When you compare it to the test footage it also looks a little bit green. It's not a huge problem, but it is something to consider. Now, when you step up to something like the ALM9, it's about the same price or a little bit cheaper, but it is a little bit brighter. But the problem, like the other light, is that you don't really have a way to accurately set the color temperature. It comes with these magnetic clip-on diffusers and these gels. So if you wanted your light to look more blue, you basically just take it and stick it on there but that's the extent of what you're able to control. For its size, the ALM9 holds up pretty well, but if you have about $10 more to spend, you could get something like this Yolanzi VL120, which not only has color temperature mode, but it is full RGB, which means it also has color modes. Now, that wasn't a criteria, but it is something nice to have when you compare it to the other options that you'll see in a minute. One of the things I noticed with this light is that it does have a significant significant magenta tint, especially when you use the included rubber silicone diffuser. Now the idea is that that would soften the light, but the problem is that there's no way to control the magenta or the green tint unless you go into your camera and set it manually. The strong point of this light is really the fact that it has RGB modes, so you could use it to light your footage, but you could also use it to be used as a background light like what I'm using back there. Now, if you're someone who's in the 30 or $40 budget range and all you're looking for is a constant white light, you might actually be better served by going to Home Depot and picking up a two or three pack of light bulbs that are daylight white balance. So look for 5,000 or 5,600 Kelvin, setting that up and then throwing a bed sheet or a shower curtain in front of it just to diffuse the light. You wouldn't get perfectly color accurate lighting, but you would get a quality of light that is similar to the setup that I have going on here. And then when you're ready to step up to the $60 price range, that's when you get to this newer PT-176. It's very bright for the size and the capacity, but one thing it lacks is the newer LED technology. So the LEDs are the old style. They don't really diffuse as nicely as some of these other lighting options, and there's no way to control the color temperature. So it comes with these plastic frosted sleeves. There's an orange one, and then there's this clear one. You basically just put it in front, and that's all you get. But this light is very bright. I think I was looking at around 4,800 lux, and when you set it to 20%, you were getting the 900 lux that we were looking for in our test samples. So a very bright light, but very direct light, and I do feel like it's a little bit expensive for the quality of the light that you're getting compared to some of the next options that we have. Now, if you're looking for any of these lighting products, all of them will be linked down in the description below, along with the light that I'm using to film this video, my background lights, and pretty much all of my camera gear. Or if you're a photographer and you're looking for Lightroom presets, those are also down in the description below. I don't wanna say they're a one-click operation, but if you've taken a good photo with good composition and good lighting, then a good preset on top of that can be pretty close to one-click operation. 
Now, if you are looking to improve the quality of your photos by adding lights, this is one light that not only have I used to light my videos, but I've also used to add a little bit of touch of light to my photos. This is the ALMC, and it's one that actually has a few features that none of these other lights have. It has magnets on the back, so if you wanna stick it on your fridge or stick it somewhere to add a little bit of color in your background, not only does it have white, like 2700 Kelvin, 5600 Kelvin, the full color temperature range, but it also has different modes that like the Yolanzi one, allow you to do full color. The other benefit of the aperture light is that it has connectivity with all the other aperture lights. So I'm using the PTC tubes in the background, I'm using the 60X here, and if I wanted to, I could connect all of them, including this one, to the app and like set a scene and then basically just change all the lights all at once with basically one click. The one disadvantage is that these lights have this silicone diffuser. And at first, it might seem like a good idea because it can soften the quality of your lights, but the problem is that this diffuser is so old that it started to turn yellow. So in the test sample footage that you're seeing, I actually had to take that off in order to get an accurate color temperature. But in terms of build quality, this light is super great. The feature set on it is a five out of five. It's just not quite as bright as some of the other lights that you're seeing. But maybe you're someone who wants to keep it super simple and all you care about is getting the most light output for your dollar then that's where this Jiyun M40 5-ray light is super useful. This is actually one that I keep inside my camera bag because if I need a little bit of extra light, I want as much light as I can get. It's battery powered, it has the ability to attach to a stand, and the build quality is actually pretty great. It's the only light out of all the ones I'm showing you today that has a built-in fan. So when it gets super hot, it'll actually start to cool itself. It has color temperature mode, so you can go from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6200 if you want more blue light. And when you look at the maximum output of this light, I think you're getting around 6,000 lux according to my reading. And so really to hit that 900 lux, I barely had to touch the dimness dial, just set it almost at nothing and the lighting levels look pretty great. The only disadvantage is that the case of it is plastic and because it gets so hot, the back of it does need to have cooling vents, which, you know, maybe make it a little bit more susceptible to water and sand and dust. But in terms of value, this is gonna be the one light that I rate a full five out of five stars. All right, now we're getting into one of the first lights that I ever purchased to light my YouTube videos. This is the newer, 660 LED panel, and you'll notice right off the bat, it's already larger than the other lights. Now, at 100%, I was getting readings of around 2800 lux, again, at that two feet away, three feet away distance that I normally sit at. But in order to get to the 900 lux, I really only had to set the batteries to about 1%, and then you turn the color temperature dial all the way up. So all the way up, the color temperature dial is 5600 Kelvin, and then you just twist this guy if you want it to be more or less bright. And of course, you don't have to run it off of batteries. That is the one drawback is that if you wanna run it off of batteries, you have to buy the Sony NPF batteries extra, but it does have the DC barrel in, which it comes with the power adapter and it comes with an included case. Uh, most of the time you can find these lights in sets of two for around a little over 200 bucks and they come with a case and they come with a light stand. So when you break it down, if you don't already own light stands and you're gonna buy one of these other lights, those other lights might end up being more expensive because you have to factor in the cost of a 30 or $40 light stand. Whereas with these guys, you can find them in a pair of two and then basically have a full lighting setup for your at-home studio. And then of course they have the barn door. So if you wanna cut down and control the amount of light, you can do that. Like if you just want the light to spill everywhere, then you can open them up and the light will go and fill up your whole background. Or if you wanna cut them down a little bit to control the output a little bit more, then you can do that. Most of the time I'm using these lights to shoot video projects. Like if I have a wedding, I'm gonna bring two of these with me, throw them in a bag because again, they're mainly a metal construction 
I don't have to worry about them getting beat up. And if I run out of batteries, then I can just take those off, pop new ones on. So super versatile if you're looking for something that has maybe a little bit more utility and a few more features than some of these other lights, but isn't crazy like an RGB light. It just has the basic color temperature modes. Now, I wasn't gonna talk about this light, but because I showed the newer panel, I also wanted to show this, which is the Nanlite MixiPad 2 27C. It's significantly bigger than all the other lights that we've shown, and it's a little bit more expensive than the budget that we're going for in this video. This guy has two modes that I think are really cool. It has, well, it has color modes. It has the CCT hard mode, which is kind of standard, like what you saw on the newer lights. But if you want, it has this built-in diffusion. So if I hit mode again, it goes into this soft mode where the light is coming in from the side, bouncing off the panel, and then basically creating its own diffusion so that you don't need to plug in a softbox diffuser. You kind of have a fake softbox built into the light. What you'll notice in the sample footage is that the Nanlite Mixi Pad is a little bit more magenta than some of the other lights we've tested. Now, that's the default setting. You can actually go in and on the back, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a green and magenta tint. So you could correct for that magenta tint right inside the, the light instead of having to adjust for it later when you're color grading. Normally this light costs about twice as much as the newer 660, but I have seen it on sale for around 170. So if you can pick it up for that price and you have a little bit more of a budget to spend, this is kind of like your all-in-one LED panel solution. But let's circle back and talk about some of the lights that I would pick if I was shopping in the sub $100 price range. So the first, for the best budget option is gonna have to be the Ulanzi VL120. For $40, the fact that you get color temperature modes and the ability to put it into the color modes means that if you ever down the road wanna use it to do something else, like light up your background, then you can just set it to a color and I hope it didn't break. It's fine, <laughs> it's fine. And then if we're talking about brightest light for the dollar that is under $100, then that has to go to the Zhiyun. It's actually incredible how much wattage they've shoved into this small package that not only has the battery built in, but it has a fan to keep it cool and keep it running. But again, it's a super simple light. So if all you want is the maximum amount of light output for your dollar, then definitely go with the M40. And then in terms of most versatile, I'm gonna have to give that award to the newer 660, mainly because it has the ability to attach accessories like the barn doors or the softbox diffusers. And if you want it to run off of batteries, you can do that. But the disadvantage is that does come at an extra cost. Hopefully you found a light that fits your needs. Now, keep in mind, the best light is probably just whatever light you have. And even if you don't have LED lights, you can always go and shoot your content outdoors because really the best source of light is just natural light. And I know all the flash photographers are probably hating me right now. If you wanna learn more about my lighting setup or the lights I'm using, including this Amaran 200X or this really cute Zhiyun 60 watt light, I've made videos on all of those products. You can check them out, they'll be linked I don't know, here or here or somewhere. And remember, if you wanna pick up any of the lights, all the links for each of those products will be in the description below, along with my presets. But let me know which one of these products was most interesting to you. What is your favorite budget LED video lighting option? Go ahead, hit the subscribe if you like this video and you wanna see more content like this. And until the next one, take care.